How's everyone doing? Today I have a Blu-ray and DVD update. Right here I've got some of the Red Box of Mystery, a couple of them, and those are from 20th Century Fox, and then I got a, a bunch of other ones from other different companies right here. And If you've seen any of these movies, definitely let me know what you think of them and let me know which one is your favorite from this update. First up, uh, this is the Unnameable. This is an HP Lovecraft adaptation, and this is from Unearth Classics, and it's distributed by MVD Visual. Really nice slipcover. Um, this one is really crazy all over the place. I like the concept of it, but the execution really isn't that great. There's some really good special features in here if you are a fan of it. Um, there's a newly restored 4K transfer, uh, and then there's commentary, a lot of commentary on here. There's an interview with the actors. Um, yeah, there's just a ton of great special features on here. Um, yeah, I, I, that's one thing I definitely enjoy about um, this release. A lot of times I feel like the special features for certain releases might be better than the film. You find out a lot of interesting stories and uh, it's really cool to see the actors now talking about their time uh, working on the film. Uh, but basically this is about a uh, creature um, that was essentially born and it's so hideous looking that if you see it you can't describe it. It's unnameable. Uh, and it's in this old abandoned house and it's kind of like a folklore legend a lot of people don't think it's true uh, and there's a group of friends that say you know let's uh, stay in this house and see you know check it out uh, actually one of them goes the other ones don't go with him and then he kind of disappears and another two friends go looking for him and at that same time uh, there's a couple of fraternity guys bringing these girls to the house as well they're gonna show them where the sorority usually has like a, a uh, kind of initiation kind of thing going on there and uh, so they all they're all going in there and of course, they come across the creature, the unnameable, which is right there on the front cover. If you want to know what it looks like, it's a very interesting, creative look. I'll give it that. It's very different, unique. It's got hooves. Uh, it's got breasts. It's got the long hair. Um, I felt like they didn't know what to do with it. Um, it is a bit clunky, inconsistent pacing. There's a long period of them walking around the house, nothing really going on, and then you know, yelling and screaming, and then you don't really see. You see like uh, the claws scratching people, killing people. Um, the effects were okay. Uh, some of the effects looked good, other effects didn't. Um, and then you, you get a look at one point, like a full look of the creature, the unnameable, and it's just kind of like standing there for a minute, like it didn't know what to do. And then it like crawled over there. I was like, what is it doing just standing there? <laughs> like, go after the people that you just, you know, knocked down. But then there's, there's a little bit more of the storyline. I wish they would have gotten more in depth about that. Uh, you get more of that towards the end, but uh, I felt like they just kind of touch upon it and I wanted a little bit more. I felt kind of rushed when they actually talk about the actual storyline of the, the creature uh, and then what has to be done to you know protect it and you know make sure it doesn't get out. Which is one of the things the whole time I was thinking, why is this creature not gotten out of the house this whole time? You know, it's been there for, uh, I don't know, something like crazy, like maybe a hundred years or something to that effect. But uh, basically it's... You know, very uh, stereotypical storyline. You see a uh, creature in a house with, you know, attacking kids and the kids trying to fight to survive. And uh, yeah, it's a very unique look for the creature. I think that's what you watch this movie for, the creature itself. Um, I wish they would have uh, done a little bit, things a little bit differently. Um, again, the score wasn't, could have been a little bit better too. That was a little frantic at times. Didn't mash up as well or mesh with the certain scenes. It's formulaic, but... Again, it's all about the look to the unnameable that makes uh, this worth a watch, even though at times uh, it could have been a little bit better. Again, I just I think about a couple scenes of like, what is it doing? Do something. like. But overall, really nice release if you are a fan of it. A nice slip cover. You get the artwork right there. Great special features. Transfer. There's the disc artwork. And uh, yeah, very interesting. Let me know what your favorite HP Lovecraft adaptation uh, film is. Uh, there's a, a bunch to choose from. From Beyond is one of my uh, favorites for sure. Um, but yeah, this one, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to find the year on it. It's uh, 88. But uh, yeah, I, it was uh, it was interesting. It's, it's all about the look for the unnameable. Uh, next up from Arrow Video is Scalpel. This one isn't really horror. Uh, I initially thought it was going to be. It's more drama. Uh, it's almost like a deranged Lifetime movie in, in a way. It, they uh, describe it as, uh, I think, Southern Gothic. I believe that's, yeah, Southern Gothic. Um, but uh, basically, it's oh, it stars Robert Lansing, who's uh, very well known. Uh, he was great in this role, kind of a deranged uh, plastic surgeon. And his daughter goes missing, like runs away from home. And uh, there's a large inheritance that she's supposed to get. And so what he does, because he's greedy and evil and deranged, um, 
he finds a girl that looks like her and her face is all messed up so she uh, decides or so he decides to uh, perform plastic surgery on her to make her look like his daughter and so they can get the inheritance and like you know, split it essentially and then the daughter comes back home um, so of course there's all kinds of drama a lot of people haven't seen her in a while they throw like a uh, coming home party and uh, it's just a lot of dramatics and uh, there is some suspense here uh, especially towards the climax of it and a little bit of a twist going on and then the, the actress here uh, plays dual roles as the, the daughter and then the girl pretending to be the daughter I, again, I like the interviews a lot here, especially with the lead actress, uh, who was really good in the role, and hearing her talk about it is awesome. One thing about Arrow Video that I absolutely love, again, the special features, they do such an amazing job. Uh, Arrow Video is just killing it with their releases, newly commissioned artwork, reversible artwork, the cleared case, the packaging, the booklet, um, the disc artwork, transfer, special features, just everything. Um, so, absolutely love it. There we go, right there. Again, you get the booklet. Again, I feel like they're uh, advertising more as horror, but it's it's definitely not. It's it's drama. And again, the reversible artwork. But I did enjoy this one. Um, I think uh, the acting really worked well. Um, <laughs> the storyline could have... I wish it was a little bit more thrilling. But uh, again, one that I would say it's worth checking out, at least for a one-time watch. Um, and again, the special features were awesome. I, that's one of the things I... Sometimes I like the special features a little bit more than the movie itself. Uh, next up, Smash Palace. This is part of the Arrow Academy line, which I really enjoy their Arrow Academy line. I always say I think Suture from Arrow Video should have been the first uh, Arrow Academy one from the U.S. Um, but this one is directed by um, Roger Donaldson, who did uh, Sleeping Dogs, which also has an Arrow Video release, uh, which is a really good film. This one, too, um, is another New Zealand, they call it a New Wave New Zealand uh, film right here. So this one is a uh, stars Bruno Lawrence who's really good in uh, The Quiet Earth another really good uh, New Zealand film and um, Once Were Warriors is another one too. Once Were Warriors and Quiet Earth both have um, uh, Really good uh, blu-ray releases from a uh, film movement, which I think is an underrated company releasing But uh, back to Arrow Video who does an amazing job on this release Smash Palace It's basically about a couple whose uh, relationship is kind of stagnating and uh, the guy is kind of obsessed with racing He's a former race car driver and uh, she was a nurse. They met in, uh, I believe, in England, and they go back to New Zealand. And um, he's taking over the, the his father, who passed away, his salvage yard. So his whole life revolves around cars, racing, salvage, and he's kind of just preoccupied with that. And she wants to go out and party, and he doesn't go with her. So she goes out one night and cheats with his friend, and basically leaves him for his friend. And then they have a daughter together. It's just kind of the dramatics of that, and he kind of spirals out of control, loses his mind. And kidnaps his daughter and goes to like the outback and there's a police search for him um, but it's, there's a really good uh, scene in here with a train I love that scene so much uh, and I love um, Bruno Lawrence in the role he brings a lot of depth to his performance great emotional honesty here uh, some dramatics and comedy too that really work well and a great release again from uh, Arrow Video uh, newly commissioned artwork disc artwork uh, the booklet right there reversible artwork transfer special features all that good stuff and again, the packaging too. I like the clear case. If you're a physical media fan, uh, those little nice added touches uh, really work well. Uh, so yeah, Arrow Video doing a great job with the releases. Next up from uh, Lionsgate is Damsel. This is a DVD only release with Robert Pattinson and Mia Wasikowska. Uh, this is set during the pioneer times and uh, Robert Pattinson is uh, basically traveling across the American frontier looking for the love of his life who he's going to marry. He has a ring and he gets he enlists the help of a priest to marry them and uh, they it starts out you think it's uh, he's really a genuine good guy and then it kind of turns out he's uh, a little bit different you kind of get little as, as the movie progresses you get more and more of that coming out but uh, that's just basically like the first half of the movie the second half of the movie is completely different and felt unnecessary I felt like a completely different movie at that point and there's so many people who are apparently in love with her character like every single guy in this movie is in love with her and I'm just like why like they don't even like talk to her and she seems really stuck up and snooty and not very friendly but given certain things that happen I can understand why but I just don't understand why they would fall for her so quickly because of her attitude I don't know and there's this little pony right there too which is great one of the best parts of the movie actually uh, like a little mini pony uh, but yeah it's uh, basically blurring the lines of the different characters and the evolution of the characters as well um, it's a dramatic adventure movie set uh, the pioneer times um, you, I, I 
did not enjoy this one. I couldn't recommend it. Um, the first half was decent. Uh, had some good suspense. You don't know what to expect, or you kind of do, but um, it's you know they get little hints of it coming up. Um, but certain things kind of take you by surprise. There's one scene that caught me off guard a little bit, uh, but then after that, it's just a little bit formulaic, and then the whole second half of the movie just felt unnecessary and just uh, just went downhill after uh, essentially like the climax was at the middle of the movie and just the rest of it just seems kind of tedious. Um, so this one was disappointing to me, but I do like uh, the acting performances here. And I think Robert Pattinson has come a long way since Twilight. I think he's actually a really good actor. I really enjoyed him in Rover uh, too, which I felt was underrated. Uh, Mia Wachowski, who's been in a ton of great stuff, really enjoy her too. Next up is uh, The Watcher in the Woods. This is a remake. Uh, and this stars Angelica Houston and Tallulah Evans. Uh, basically, uh, uh, family moves to the UK from America and uh, where they live, there's like these woods surrounding the house and people are telling them not to go into the woods. And uh, Angelica Houston used to live in the house. She doesn't want to move out of the house. So they kind of like push her out. There's a like a small, like little, almost kind of like a hut kind of uh, away from the house. And that's where she stays. And her daughter, like 20 years ago, disappeared in the woods. And there's a, you know, a whole kind of like folklore legend about it in this small town. And uh, the young girl right there is trying to figure out what happened to her daughter and what Angelica Houston has to do with it and why everybody's afraid to go into the woods. There's a really creepy character with like a plague mask and there's a lot of backstory there. And I thought that was uh, pretty good and creepy. Uh, I think it's a decent remake, um, but uh, the original one is definitely creepier. And uh, again, it's I'd say it's worth checking out if you are a fan of these kind of uh, creepy uh, woods movies and a little bit of drama mystery going on. Uh, lighter on the horror and more about uh, the drama mystery aspects of it. Uh, but for me, it's like a one-time watch. Uh, I think they could have done more with it. They could have made it creepier. They could have gone more into the backstory and done a little bit more creepy horror elements, thrilling elements, more so than the mystery uh, drama part. And next up from 20th Century Fox are um, the Red Box of Mysteries. Let's go ahead and take them both out at the same time here, make it easier. There's two in each. Uh, first up is Love, Simon, which I actually really did enjoy this one. This is kind of a coming-of-age, coming-out movie. Uh, really good cast here. And it's funny, uh, this guy, um, Nick Robinson, he's been in a bunch of different things. This is by far his best performance. I actually wasn't a fan of him until this role. Um, and then you have, um, I think it's Catherine uh, Langford from 13 Reasons Why. The first season, she was great in here, too. Um, it's a romance movie. He's coming to terms and... You know, there's a whole secret of, uh, there's like this website where you can post secrets. And uh, he basically comes out on there and people are trying to figure out who he is. And trying to, he's trying to, he's communicating with somebody else who also is coming out. And they kind of have like an online romance. And you figure out who that is by the end of the movie. And then there's other relationship aspects going on and drama. Um, uh, Josh Dumel is the father and Jennifer Garner is the mother. Um, I like the supporting cast a lot here. This is a really heartfelt film. Uh, some good emotional honesty and again coming through at high school um, a lot of uh, drama and uh, I thought it was actually really good and one I would definitely recommend probably the highest recommendation of all of these thus far so uh, another nice release too with some good special features uh, next up is Maze Runner Death Cure which I have not seen yet uh, I wasn't a big fan of the, the only one that I've seen is the first one I haven't seen that one actually I think I showed this uh, a while back uh, 20th Century Fox sent one, and I think they meant to send this in the Red Box of Mystery, but they sent the original one, because uh, this is the, the newest release here. So, looking forward to checking this one out. Kind of more, you know, YA stuff, young adult stuff. Uh, next up, uh, Isle of Dogs, which I actually, uh, from Wes Anderson, which I really enjoyed. I didn't think I was going to initially. I think I was, like, one of the only people who saw the trailer. I just, you know, I wasn't blown away by it. Everybody else seemed to love it. Uh, but it's basically um, about this dog. All these dogs are... Uh, there's uh, this like dog flu, and they're basically all ex all the dogs are exiled to uh, Trash Island, and uh, was this, I think it's is it set in uh, Japan, I believe, I think that's where it's set in. But uh, yeah, so basically all the dogs are exiled there, and uh, this one guy who um, I think he's I can't remember if it's like the the, the mayor over there who he is um, is it yeah Megasaki a city. Uh, he's like the adopted son essentially of the mayor and he's looking for the dog it is his dog and um the bodyguard's dog spots um yeah, it's basically his bodyguard dog the the kid 
the dog's supposed to watch over him, and uh, he goes to Trash Island looking for uh, his dog, and he finds all these other dogs, and uh, the one thing I didn't like about this is you can't, it's just such a uh, drastic change of uh, one character's personality. They're not just going to have this epiphany and completely change who they are in a split second. I just don't think that's believable. That is my big issue about this movie, and really my only gripe about it. Everything else I loved, um, and very uh, inventive, unique, creative. I love the, the animation style to it, too. Uh, I really like Wes Anderson as a director. Let me know what your favorite Wes Anderson movie is. For me, it's either Darjeeling Limited or uh, Royal Tannenbaums. Uh, but really creative film, uh, great adventure movie, um, some good uh, emotional aspects in here, too. And, uh, you know, it's it's nice to see a movie like this coming out in this day and age with a, a kind of animation style. So I really enjoyed that one for sure. Probably probably my second favorite of this bunch. Next up is Super Troopers 2. Ah, I wanted more from this one. Uh, the, the intro I was just too ridiculous and over the top. But I really love, uh, I don't know if it says her name on here or not, uh, Emmanuel Cherqui, I think is her name. But she's so stunning. She's a Sloan from Entourage. Oh my gosh. <sighs> She's in here, and she is fantastic. <laughs> uh, she is just incredibly beautiful. One of my favorite current celebrity crushes. Uh, but this has a really good supporting cast in here, too. You've got uh, Rob Lowe, Linda Carter, who's Wonder Woman. Uh, oh, my gosh. There's a few other recognizable people in here. Will Sasso is one of the Mounties. Um, there's there's a bunch of other people that are recognizable. Uh, but then you have the was it Broken Lizard. Is that who it is? Yeah, Broken Lizard uh, comedy troupe right here. Um, I recently watched uh, Club Dread, which was amazing, which definitely deserves a Blu-ray release. That was so much fun. Uh, kind of a parody slasher movie. But this one right here, the Mounties are going to um, basically take over part of what used to be Canada, but with all the, you know, they kind of do some political, you know, comedy right there uh, with, uh, you know, building the wall and drawing the lines. And they find out this one part that used to be Canada is actually part of America. So uh, they're taking over for the Mounties there, and there's all kinds of, you know, uh, controversy with that. All the townspeople hate the, the Super Troopers right there, and uh, it's just regular, the, the standard hijinks from the Super Troopers movies, but kind of like watered down a little bit. This one felt like uh, this uh, sequel came a little bit too late, um, so I just wanted a little bit more from it. It's the same kind of hijinks, but I don't know, just it, it felt a little too generic to me. For I wanted more from it. I wanted more heart from it. Um, it was average comedy for me. Um, again, the supporting cast was some of the best part for me. But uh, it's if you are a big fan of the Super Troopers, I'd say check it out. But uh, you know, keep your expectations low. It's not as good as the first one at all. Um, but yeah, there you go. Those were the pickups right there. Let me know if you've seen the movies, what you think of them, and which one is your favorite. Leave me some comments down below. Hope everybody's doing well. Take care.